Hello dual beam fib users, we're bound here behind an XL835 dual beam system and I'm going to remove the sump so that we can access the stage and uh, remove it and uh, service a little problem we're having with the Z access of the stage and uh, hopefully we'll be able to record that in a video that will be useful for somebody. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start by uh, bringing the sump down, we just turn this handle, everything should move smoothly. If it feels like it's binding or uh, giving you troubles not turning, <coughs> then there might be a problem with the cables and that would be a different service issue. But anyway, if everything's working fine, good, let's lower it down and we got to make sure that it's uh, going down on this little cart little cart with the wheels so that we can pull the sump out and uh, be able to access the stage. So anyway, turning the crank, bring it all the way down. So what we've got to do is go down. Now that the sump is down and on the weight is on the, on the cart, we have to loosen each one of these four little cable nuts. And of course we've got to make sure that these cables are completely slack. We remove the nut and we do this on each corner. Okay, well now that we have the nuts, all of these nuts disconnected, once we have all these nuts disconnected, now we need to come back here and turn the crank so that the, uh, the little, kind of the little antennas that support the cables are uh, are retracted. Let's see if I can get a good image of that right here. So you can see there's the little antenna. If I can get it in focus. There. Now as I turn the crank, you can see that it gets pulled down. And it's very important that we always keep attention on these cables or else the, uh, the little winch that's down here inside the sump will get all tangled up and then we'll have a really big problem on our hands. So we've got to make sure that all of these cables are retracted so they don't get damaged when we wheel the sump out from underneath the system. And you can see as I turn the crank, they get lower and lower. And that's just what we want to have. We want to have them come down to where they're flush at the top of the sump. Kind of like watching grass grow. So oh, there we go. And you look around, it was all over there. In front of the sump, they're pulled down, so we're good. Now we're going to wheel this sump out of here. And uh, as you can see, it's on wheels. All we're going to do is just grab onto it and pull it out. I'm not going to be holding the, the camera while I do that. I'll just show you when I get it out. Okay, we got the sump pulled out. There it is sitting I just wheel it out from underneath the system and now we can see now we can see the big bridge of the stage there and soon I'll, I'll uh, put a cart under here with a little cradle and we'll, we'll loosen up and remove all the bolts and uh, then we can drop it out of there that's the next step Okay, one thing we have to do before we uh, can pull out the stage is we have to go and remove a connector on the inside here. That's this little guy. You can see it's attached to a little metal plate and uh, there's some little tubes and uh, it goes into the ceiling of the, of the chamber there. There's one socket heads cap screw you can see there and 
and that's what needs to be removed. On the side of the tool, there's two connectors. On the uh, SBB and the uh, SMC. Okay guys, we got a three millimeter hex wrench to remove. Okay, now we can grab hold of this plate and we can pull down and now this little guy comes loose. And, and you can see at the top there's also a BNC connector. You gotta remove that BNC connector as well. Okay. See these circuit boards? You gotta grab them by the edges and pull them off. They just got little push connectors that hold them in place. Here's what it looks like when you're all done, when you get everything pulled out. One last thing, there's this little uh, wire that comes down to the board. This little wire needs to be removed. This connector needs to be undone. Click, you leave this little guy. This is for the tilt sensor. This little tilt sensor wire it needs to be left disconnected. Okay, now we place the uh, little cart underneath the stage. Now we gotta pump it up. sure we're not pinching any cables. Okay, now there's a little a little uh, force gauge that's built into this. And uh, I'll show you how this works. So you can't see it right now. But I'm going to keep pumping up the table. And then the little red flag pops up and that tells us that we have proper tension on the cradle. Okay, here on the side of the stage there are several bolts and these all need to be loosened. You don't need to remove them, they just need to be loosened so that their threads are no longer no longer in that uh, aluminum bridge assembly. So you just, they're, they're captured they're captured screws in the counterweight so you just unscrew them until they're loose. Okay, and then there are also four socket head cap screws that need to be completely removed from this end of the stage bridge and you need a six millimeter hex wrench for that. So now we have all the bolts loose on both sides and we've removed the bolts on this side now we can lower the cart carefully and the stage should come down with the cart. Yes, look at that, very nice. The stage is free. And now we can back it out. There it is. Okay, this is the stage after it's been removed. You can see this is the what we call the tilt bridge, which contains the x-axis. The x-axis is in this direction. Uh, incidentally, here's a, a tuned mass damper. And here is the y-axis carriage, which goes in this direction. And this is the rotation unit and Z is also contained here. We can 
we can lift up. We can lift up and move it in the Z direction and rotate it this way. And uh, this again is Y and this is X. This is a Y motor. This is also a Y motor. And the uh, X motors are hidden underneath here. These black lines are brake lines and um, vent lines for the, uh, for the motors or ventilation lines for the motors for cooling. Pull out the screws that put in these hold on these little uh, these little shields, and then we can disconnect the connectors. And of course, try to remember how everything goes back together. Now with the wires removed, we can uh, remove these one, two, three, four, five, six bolts, and then the bottom will come off and we'll expose the uh, rotation and the uh, Z mechanisms. Okay, now lift this up, and here's the little rotation motor, here's the Z motor, this little plastic gear which you can't see very well is the uh, is the rotation drive and this little this little stub over here is the little finger that pushes Z up and down. We can remove the plate after disconnecting these wires. Okay so let's disconnect these uh, cooling lines and uh, and these connections to the encoder read head. Okay, we got the RC unit removed. Now we can take off the rotation hub. And uh, first thing we need to do is loosen up this center screw with the uh, Torx T20. And uh, you can carefully lift up this center disc. And make sure we don't mess up the Belleville washers. Okay, there's little washers, or little spring washers here that we don't want to lose. Now there's tension on this little tension rod, and uh, we can lift it up. <coughs> Keep our thumb on that little tension rod and this will pop right off. We want to also make sure we pay attention to what position this is in when we remove it because we got to put it back in in the exact same position.
there is. Now this little plate, we can remove the four screws and that will access the little Z drive mechanism. So I've reconnected the tubes and I reconnected the wires and the little wire protectors and I reconnected the uh, connectors here on the rotation encoder reed head and now the next thing to do for reassembly of the RZ unit into its position is I got to put these little brake veins into the little slots they fit precisely into. So what I got to do is flip this over and uh, and then line them up and I'll, I'll put that in the position so you can watch me do that okay so I flipped the RZ unit over and now you can see the little tilt vein is uh, right here it's difficult to see but uh, the important thing is that you just need to line up the edges with the entrance to the little slot and then it falls right in and if you have to if you have to push it, then you're doing something wrong. It should just go right in nice and easy. There. And you should, you should be able to move it up and down and not feel any binding. It should just slide up and down nice and free. Here's the view you get inside the chamber if you have the have the stage removed. You can see the ion column, the electron column, the, uh, the EDS detector, the CDEM, the light pipe, the GIS needle, and the uh, extractor needle, and the, did I say EDS detector already? Anyway, yeah, it's all in there. You can see the tilt axis, the, and uh, you can see the feed through for the stage electronics. Um, very interesting view you don't get to see very much. Oh, and there's the big old pump port. So here's the stage on the on the little lift and we've cleared away a path so we can get it back under the chamber and you can see we need to get it in between the counterweight and the and the bracket that hold it in place so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move it on in. We got the stage in place, we got the little red indicator showing, showing that we have enough pressure. Now we got to tighten up all these bolts on both sides, the four bolts on the one bracket side and the whole bunch of socket head bolts on the counterweight side. And then we can connect the electronics. Okay, now check that you get your electronics and tubing and the uh, stage ground connected and then run over here and connect your uh, SMC and SBB connectors and now you should be ready for action. You can, uh, we can run over open P90 test and uh, okay we've got P90 test opened we can hit restart and we can hear pretty soon we'll hear the motors moving now we hear the motors going when the sump is removed we can hear the motors Homing the stage. Now it's going to go to zero zero. And if something goes wrong, we'll see some errors. for something to settle here apparently or maybe we're going to generate an error. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Now it's going to zero zero. Hmm. 
Okay, looks like everything's good so far. Okay, the next thing we want to do is make sure that the uh, that the uh, uh, load lock and stage are aligned properly. Since I didn't really make any big changes to the uh, to the stage, I'm pretty confident that I don't really need to do the adjustment. I'm just going to do a, a no vacuum mode transfer before I pump it down. And I think that will allow us to just confirm that everything's okay. So I'm going to start with an unload. And now we can see the system over here. And now I can load a sample holder. to load. Now it tells us what it's doing here. It's moving to the um, pumping the load lock. I don't know why it's asking to pump the load lock though. Okay, now it says it's parked. Unload again. Load. Okay, next step is going to be to reinstall the sump. And since we have the sump out, it's also a good time to clean out all the particles that might be in there. And look, we got a bunch of broken wafers, a bunch of bro broken wafer fragments in here that we should vacuum out carefully. So we're going to do that. The sump is now in place. And what's important to do now is we have to uh, let the, the four little antenna, the one on each corner of the sump, we have to extend them back up. And we have to pay very close attention that each one is extending. These little antenna are spring-loaded and are supposed to keep a constant tension on the on the lift cables but if there's something wrong if there's some friction in there then they won't and then the little cable will get bound up in the internal winch and then that'll make a big service issue on the sump. So let's sit here and uh, make sure that all these little sump cables are extending the way they're supposed to. Let's Zoom in over there. Yeah, that one looks good. And yeah, that one looks good. Okay, things are going okay. Sometimes it's helpful to have an assistant watching the cables in the front while you uh, crank up in the back there. Okay, we got all our nice little nuts are clamped here and in place just like we want them. And, uh, and in front as well, there it is, over there, look at that, right where we want it. And this one you can just see, over there. And now our job is to crank up the sump. So we're going to spend some time cranking up the sump. Okay, we got the sump all cranked up, and now we can start pumping, and we can push the electronics back in place, and uh, we can sit and wait and see if everything's okay. We've tested the transfer process, we've tested that the stage homes, so I think we're in good shape.